what about the 144,000? Well, most of us would use this passage of Scripture in Revelation chapter 7 to prove that God is not done with the nation of Israel. But if you're a replacement theology heretic like Stephen Anderson, then you basically go through and you try to warp the Scriptures to teach against the Jews of today, which is exactly what he does. Let's watch. Right. And you say, oh, the 144,000, they're going to be of those 12 tribes. Look, somebody said, well, you know, they don't know who they are, but God does. God could just pick 12,000 people randomly, and they'd be of Reuben with all this mixing. He could just pick 12,000 people randomly, and they'd be of Gad. They'd be of Asher. Random, anybody. Randomly, anybody, anybody. God could just pick, just pick anybody, anybody. Okay, well, if that's true, then why does God make a very clear distinction? Let me show you here. Let me zoom out a little bit so you can see this a little bit better. Here you have Revelation chapter 7. Here it begins, the 12,000 from each of the 12 tribes. And there they're listed. Verse 9, After this I beheld and lo, a great multitude, which no man could number, of all nations and kindreds and peoples and tongues. Well, wait a second. If... God can just pick anybody randomly. If everybody's Jews, why make the distinction between Jews and Gentiles in Revelation chapter 7? There, it's all blended anymore. Well, apparently, God doesn't know about DNA science like Stephen Anderson does. Apparently, Stephen Anderson is more intelligent than God because God made the ultimate boo-boo of looking down and going, I see 12,000 from each of the 12 tribes down there that I'm going to seal on the earth which is where they are, by the way, and you're going to see Stephen Anderson denies that too here coming up. But God looks down and he sees distinction. And he separates. That's how you know that the body of Christ, another reason you know that the body of Christ is not going to be in that time. Because you see, God separates. Right now, he looks down and he says, okay, you're all one in Christ. That's true. But interestingly, if you look at that verse, let's actually turn there. If you haven't seen the other Stephen Anderson and his lies videos. Let me just want, I'm going to make this point again here. Because this is an important point to get. This is one that Stephen Anderson likes to cover up time and time again. Galatians chapter 3, verse 28. <clears throat> He'll say, There is neither Jew nor Greek. There is no difference between the two of us. We're Jews. No, there's no Jew and Greek or anything else. Keep reading. There's neither bond nor free. There's neither male nor female, for you're all one in Christ. Christ Jesus there. Um, okay. <clears throat> uh, I don't think so. There definitely is a difference between man and woman. Sure there is. Absolutely. And there's a difference between Jew and Greek and bond and free as well. I'll show you a little scripture here real quick. First Timothy chapter 6, <clears throat> Let as many servants as are under the yoke count their own masters worthy of all honor. Wait a second. There's no difference between the bond and the free. There shouldn't be any difference between a servant and master. But there is. There is. I'll show you another one. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 24. Therefore, as the church is subject unto Christ, so let the wives be to their own husbands in everything. Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it. The wife see that she reverence her husband. Wait a second, there's neither male nor female. Come on, what's the difference here? I explained this in another video, but I'm just going to hit this thing again. Because it's just like, apparently Anderson doesn't quite get this. Romans chapter 3, verse 1. What advantage then hath the Jew, or what profit is there of circumcision? But wait, there's no difference between Jews and Gentiles and Greeks and things. There's no difference. It's talking about... As a Christian, you can have the same rewards. It doesn't matter. You can't have, you, you, oh, you're a woman, so you can't have the same rewards as a man. 
No, 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 no. Position in Christ, there's no difference. Man, woman, bond, free, Jew, Greek, whatever. But in this life, yes, there is a difference. There's a big difference. And what Stephen Anderson is doing there, you know, oh, there's no difference. We're all, you know, we're all just one. There's, there's, there's no difference. You're, no, there's no difference. There are no, there are no Jews anymore. We're all just one. See how he perverts and twists Scripture. Let's continue. But you know what? That's not true. Those 12 tribes in Revelation are Old Testament saints from back when those tribes actually existed and meant something. It don't mean anything anymore. No Jew can even tell you what tribe they're of today because they haven't gone their family tree all the way back to 70 AD. Okay. But thank God we're the chosen ones. Doesn't it feel good to be chosen? Doesn't it feel good to be the elect? You know, God's people, the holy nation. You blasphemous little worm you. Oh, it's so disgusting. You know, just openly, openly denying Scripture right in front of, of God and man and just saying, there's no difference. This, this, this isn't there. It's, I mean, it's just, these are just Old Testament. This, this, there's no distinction anymore. This is all just, these are Old Testament saints. Okay. Let's look about that. Revelation chapter 7. Down here, talking about the angels and things, and it says, verse 3, saying, Hurt not the earth, neither the sea nor the trees, till we have sealed the servants of our God in their foreheads. By the way, you can't take these chapters and make the book of Revelation is not completely chronological. There are many times it will tell you the events of the time of Jacob's trouble from beginning to end. You say, give me an example, okay? Revelation chapter 6, verse 1. Go over here. The Lamb opens one of the seals, and I heard, as it were, the noise of thunder, one of the four beasts saying, come and see. And right there, Antichrist is unleashed. So right here, the Antichrist is unleashed. He who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. Jesus says to, to Paul in Acts chapter 8, he says, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? You know what they do when they're killing Christians, the Catholics and things like this? You know what they're doing when they're killing Christians? They're persecuting Jesus Christ. They're persecuting his body. See? I'm a member of the body of Christ. Bone of his bones, flesh of his flesh. We're connected. I'm seated together in, in heavenly places right now in Christ Jesus. We read about that in the Ephesians study. Right there. He who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. Okay? The body of Christ leaves, and then shall that wicked be revealed. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. Pre-trib rapture, you see. I mean, think about this. Why would Jesus Christ punish a Christian who's doing right? You see, but you see, Brian, it's the New World Order. It's the Illuminati set up the New World Order. No, 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 no. Get this thing through your head, okay? It's not the Illuminati. The Illuminati is not doing things that God's up there going, Oh, oh no, I didn't think that they could do that. Oh, oh boy, oh, this new world order is forming. What am I going to do? Um, God is the one that's bringing the whole thing about for his glory, and he is using these wicked people. Okay? Um, read the book of Job sometime, and you'll see that Satan can't do anything unless God gives him permission. Hast thou considered my servant Job? Satan says, let me touch him, and he'll curse you to your face. God says, okay, you can mess with his things, but don't touch him. Job chapter 2 comes along. He still retains his integrity, Satan. You see that? And the devil goes, let me touch him now. The Lord says, okay, just don't kill him. You see? You see? Now, who's more evil, the Illuminati or Satan? Obviously, Satan's a bit more powerful, you know. And yet, Satan has to get permission from God to do anything. Do you think the Illuminati can get away with things that God can't control? Of course not. Of course not. This new world order that's coming, it's part of God's plan. And God is positioning these evil men and these wicked men and stuff like this. I mean, what does the Bible say about Nebuchadnezzar? There's a por portion of Scripture where it actually talks about my servant Nebuchadnezzar. The king's heart is in the hand of the Lord. And the Lord just goes, okay, do this, do that, say this, say that, whatever, whatever. God is in control of everything. That's why you want to be saved, you know. That's why it's good to be on the Lord's side, you know. Very important. 
But you see, it starts out there in, in Revelation chapter 6. And like I've been saying, why on earth would Jesus Christ open the seals and pour out all this judgment on himself? It doesn't make any sense. You say, what about the martyrs? The martyrs weren't persecuted by Jesus Christ. The Lord allowed the Catholic Church to come in and persecute Christians. Sure, absolutely. But it wasn't because, you know, these, these Christians here, you know, I'm just going to judge them and, and punish them and things like this. No, no. Persecution from the world is not the same thing as the Lord himself opening up the seals. That's an important distinction to get. All right. Jesus Christ is the one opening the seals. And there's a great multitude in heaven. Look over here in Revelation chapter 5. Right there, 24 elders and things. They're redeemed out of uh, uh, us to God by thy blood out of every kindred, tongue, people, nation. And down here is another group here. number of them was 10,000 times 10,000 and thousands of thousands. The body of Christ. These are not Old Testament Jews. The body of Christ in heaven before the first seal is opened. Pre-tribulation rapture, people. That's what it is. Okay? Pre-time of Jacob's trouble rapture actually be the right way to say it. But you see, here is this. It goes down through over here. When he had opened the sixth seal, and lo, there was a great earthquake, and the sun became black as sackcloth of hair, and the moon became his blood. It goes down through. Jesus Christ comes back. This Revelation chapter 6 from here down to verse 17 is giving you an entire synopsis of the entire time of Jacob's trouble, the seven-year time period right there. That's what it's doing. And then in Revelation chapter 7, it goes back before the whole thing starts. And the, Bible, and the book of Revelation will do this over and over again. You'll see this thing. It'll go a couple chapters describing the seven trumpets or the seven vials or whatever. And it'll go back and it'll retell the whole thing. It'll retell certain parts. But Revelation chapter 7, right here, hurt not the earth. So see, this is coming before these events up here. Because the earth is definitely hurt, hurt here. A great earthquake, you know. And you see all these other things, war and famine and death and all this over here, down here, hurt not the earth, till we have sealed the servants of our God in their foreheads. And then God seals 144,000. God picks them. Now, don't you think God knows what he's talking about? And how wicked it is for Stephen Anderson to come along and openly say, there are no more. It's all a lie. He's calling God a liar. Let's watch the next video clip. This is Israel moment number 51. With the heathen to where they've completely lost their identity of what tribe they are. None of them can tell you what tribe they are except the ones who claim to be of Levi. But the other 11 tribes, no one can tell you what tribe they are. And even the ones who claim to be of Levi, they have no genealogy to back that up. It's just tradition that, well, my parents told me I'm of Levi. But no one can tell you I'm of Reuben, I'm of Gad, I'm of Issachar, I'm of Zebulun. They've been mingled into all nations. They've mixed with the Gentiles. They no longer have uh, any kind of a distinct distinction as a nation. The only thing that brings them together and unites them as a people is their false religion. So then Stephen Anderson is calling God a liar. How disgusting. Just absolutely disgusting. And he tries to cover it up by saying, well, but, you know, these people here in Revelation chapter 7, um, they're Old Testament saints. And like I said, that doesn't, doesn't make any sense. Why is God saying, don't touch the earth until we get work done up here in heaven? You know, why? Why? It doesn't make any sense, you know. And, and you know, you're going to see here in a minute what Anderson's system is, what he teaches is, that you have the body of Christ, they go through the first three and a half years, and somehow they manage, no member of the body of Christ manages to take the mark of the beast, which, because that would disprove being sealed until the day of redemption, you know, so, the, you know, he actually teaches one of his pre- or post-trib moment things, he actually teaches that the Antichrist is going to have brain scanners that'll be able to tell who's a Christian and who won't, or who isn't a Christian. 
I mean, chapter and verse on that one, sure, yeah. I mean, the Bible says, if any man take the mark, you know, he'll, he'll have God's wrath poured out on him, Revelation chapter 14. But Anderson has the body of Christ going into the first three and a half years. Then the body of Christ is raptured up, and when the body of Christ goes up, the 144,000 comes down with Moses and Elijah. So it's actually 144,000 and two, you know. It's not 12,000 from each of the 12 tribes. It's 12,000 from each of the 12 tribes plus two, according to Stephen Anderson and his warped little brain. 144,000 come down with Moses and Elijah, and then they go through the last three and a half years, and then they go up and meet the Lord in the air, and then they come right back down at the second coming. Okay. Sure. Let's watch this. This is uh, post-trib moment number 48. Check this out. That the 144,000 just come back a few years early. You know, they're sealed while they're up in heaven. They get their glorified new body at the rapture. And then they're placed on this earth to be here during the time that God pours out his wrath in order to replace the saints to preach his word. While we're gone up in heaven, while he's pouring out his wrath, they will be on this earth to preach the word of God. And he's not going to leave this world without a witness. Not only that, the two witnesses will be here. So, boy, apparently Anderson believes in a couple different forms of replacement theology. First, you have the body of Christ replaces Old Testament Israel. And then when we leave, the Old Testament 144,000 Jews in heaven replace the church. Wow. Boy, what, what uh, sounds scriptural exposition here. I mean, yeah. Let's watch the last clip here. Thing. That is the only way to take it literally when he says the 12 tribes. Because, you know, the tribe of, of Issachar, the tribe of Naphtali, those tribes don't exist today. You cannot find them. And you dead sure can't find 12,000 saved uh, children of God. But you can't even find the tribe to start with. So uh, it's pretty clear that these are Old Testament saints. So using this as an argument to prove, well, God's not through with the nation of Israel. God's still dealing with the nation of Israel as a separate nation. No, the Bible says that in Christ there's neither Jew nor Gentile. He said avoid genealogies. He said it makes no difference whether you're Jew or Greek. He said there's one fold, there's one shepherd. You dead sure can't find any saved Jews. Or, you know, any from these, these different tro uh, tribes here, you dead sure can't find them. Uh, well, I'm not looking for them. First of all, I'm not going to be here. Secondly, I'm not the one that seals them. And the Jews aren't the ones that seal them. God does. So by him saying what he's saying, he is openly denying the word of God. Openly denying your King James Bible, saying this book, what it clearly says there, is a lie. It's all a lie. Boy, that's really something, isn't it? And he says, there is neither Jew nor Gentile. He always goes to this, there's neither Jew or Gentile. We're, you know, they're, they're, that's not there. We're all just the same kindred now. We're, there's no difference. I mean, sure, we look different and everything, and, and uh, you know, uh, there's a lot of other differences and things, but that's not true. It's all just a lie. So again, Stephen Anderson is such a liar. Such an incredibly wicked liar. He does whatever he has to do to eliminate the fact that God has future plans for the nation of Israel. And again, why the two witnesses? Why are they coming back? They're over in the, in the streets of Jerusalem. That's where they're killed. What are they doing there? Witnessing to Christians or something? Or I guess just witnessing to lost people that, you know, the, the mixed kindred over there in Jerusalem or something like this. I guess that's what Stephen Anderson would have you believe. But why Moses and Elijah? Why couldn't just anybody come back? Because you see, Moses and Elijah are the two men that Orthodox Jews revere the most. And if you want to send back two people to confirm the word, it would be Moses and Elijah. And by the way, they show up at the beginning of the time of Jacob's trouble and they leave halfway into it. They don't come halfway and then leave at the end. Again, Anderson is just so ignorant of Scripture. It's, it's incredible. On to the next one. Watch out for Stephen Anderson.